After completing his 2021 track and field campaign, Matthew Bowling from the University of Georgia has joined the ranks as one of the greatest sprinters in the entire country. After a super successful indoor season, a very strong NCAA campaign, and a solid run at this year's Olympic trials, this 21-year-old has proven beyond any doubt that when he is at his best, he can compete with almost anyone. He's gonna hold him up. Mm, yes! Now first, let's point out the obvious. Bowling wasn't quite able to qualify for the Olympic Games this season, only reaching the semifinals in both the 100 and the 200 meters. But when you take a look at just how long and competitive his campaign was this year, it's kind of a miracle that he was even able to compete the way he did at this year's Olympic trials. In total, Bowling ran, are you ready for this? He ran a total of 40 races this season, which is an insane amount of sprinting when you're competing at such a high level. In addition to running himself into oblivion this season, let's not forget, he is also a very accomplished long jumper, and this season was no exception, as he once again managed to jump well beyond the 8 meter barrier, a world class distance for any jumper across the globe. By the time this year's Olympic trials came around, Bowling was, in many ways, running on dead legs. I mean, his times were still fast in the trials, but compared to what he had accomplished just a few months earlier, he wasn't even close to his previous performances. Which leads me to one clear conclusion. If he can properly time and execute his training to peak at the proper time, there is no reason why he cannot qualify for the World Championships next season. One of the main reasons that Matthew Bowling is a clear threat to find future success in sprinting comes from the 2021 Indoor NCAA Finals, where he competed in the 200 meters against a very, very talented field. Competing in this field in the previous heat was Joseph Von Belay, who turned out to be a future Olympian this season, claiming fifth place at 200 meters. But also in this race was the LSU superstar, Terrence Laird, who heading into this final, had maintained an undefeated record in the 200 meters. For each passing minute, the hype and anticipation surrounding this clash between Laird and Bowling only continued to grow, and after one of the closest finishes in indoor running history, Matthew Bowling managed to bring home the victory by just one one hundredth of a second. That right there is a race. With so much promise heading into his collegiate years, Bowling had finally delivered when it mattered the most, and even though it's easy to see why this NCAA title was so impressive, this performance is actually much, much greater than many realize. Now, this might sound difficult to believe, but this 20.19 second 200 meter performance ranks Matthew Bowling as the sixth fastest indoor 200 meter athlete of all time. Think about all the great athletes that have come and gone over the years, and yet bowling is well within the top 10 of anyone to ever lace up in the indoor oval. Now, you could make the claim that far fewer athletes compete during the indoor season, and to that I'd say, technically you're right. But you're forgetting one very important thing, which is that almost every single sprinter that comes through the NCAA system runs many indoor races during the early parts of their seasons. This means that athletes such as Walter Dix, Trayvon Brumel, Sean Crawford, Andre DeGrasse, Otto Bolden, and Rye Benjamin were, at one point, collegiate athletes frequenting the indoor circuit. And yet, Bowling has managed to outsprint every single one of these athletes by quite a large margin, if I might add. Also, to add even more drama to these statistics, Bowling's indoor time earned him a score of 1,259 points on the World Athletic Scoring System, and when we take this overall score and convert it to the outdoor 200 meters, we get a time of 19.75 seconds, a time that would be fast enough in any season to win either an Olympic medal or a World Championship medal. Now, this conversion system is far from perfect. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee you that bowling has never been in 19.75 shape. But, regardless of how you take this indoor-outdoor transitive property of speed, it's pretty impressive that bowling was able to crank out such a beastly performance and win such an esteemed title, all at 20 years of age. After bowling's incredible indoor season came his outdoor campaign, 
where his world-class performances only continued. As his season progressed, he achieved new personal bests in the 100 and 200 meters, running times of 10.13 and 20.06 respectively. And when we take a look at the world rankings for 2021, Bowling ranks 13th for the 200 meters, and he was tied for 83rd in the 100 meters. It's pretty clear to me that Bowling's primary event is quickly unfolding to be the 200 meter dash, and while it is entirely possible that he could be a future star in either the 100 or even the 400 meters, the half lap race right now is where he truly shines. As we alluded to earlier in this video, by the time Bowling got to this year's Olympic trials, he was pretty much running on fumes from such a long season. For the 100 meters, he was only able to achieve a time of 10.22, and for the 200, he only hit a time of 20.27, more than two tenths of a second away from his season's best, and it was also a time that was even slower than his indoor NCAA performance of 20.19. One of the most difficult complications with competing in the collegiate rankings is that you have to endure close to seven or even eight straight months of intense competitions. And for most athletes, unless you're an athlete like a Thing Mo or something, this long grind of a season leaves you nearly incapable of making the top three come the national championships. Even Terence Laird, who was running consistently close to 19.80 for the 200, was not able to make the Olympic team this season because of his incredibly long season. Indeed, if Matthew Bowling has the ability to properly build his speed next season and not over-race building up to the World Championships, I could realistically see him not just qualifying for the World Championships, but bringing home some hardware in the 200 meters. At 21 years of age, Bowling's capabilities are still unfolding to the public with each and every race. In high school, he was a true superstar, hitting marks never previously seen in track and field. And now, after quite the intense trek through one of the most competitive Olympic cycles in history, Bowling still managed to be very competitive against many of the greatest sprinters in the world. There is no question that Matthew Bowling is still one of the most compelling athletes to watch in all of athletics. And when 2022 does finally arrive, prepare yourselves, because it is more than possible that we've only seen the beginning of Matthew Bowling. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.